All right, squaddies, time to hero up. Hello, true believers. Welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures and home of the mystery box. And today we are going to hero up because we have got tons and tons and tons of superhero squad figures, an entire box over jam packed with superhero squad. So let me give you a little bit of history of this back box. Back in the early days of the pandemic when everybody was kind of slowing down, work had kind of stopped, I took on the project of going around my entire house and trying to find all the different action figures. My kids were older, they weren't really playing with toys like that anymore, and I thought it would be a good time to put together all the collections, find, you know, go through every drawer, every nook, every cranny, every bedroom, the playroom, and get everything back together in one place and sort of organize my collection. And honestly, if I hadn't done that at that time, there would be no carbon scoring channel because, you know, just like everybody else with life, toys had just been flung all over the place. And so it gave me a chance to kind of put my collection together. And one of the things that I got together were the squaddies because they had been just tossed everywhere. So when I got them back together and I felt like I had everything, I kind of grouped them into specific groupings, put them in bags, and have dropped them in this box. And they haven't been seen for years. So what I want to do is kind of go through each of these groupings sort of one at a time and take a look at what we've got because there's a lot. They made a ton of Superhero Squad figures. Uh, the line ran from around 2006 until 2011 or maybe 2005 until 2011. So that's a pretty long time for a toy line. And, I mean, we just got an amazing amount of characters during that time. That's more, that's more than I can even fit on the screen. All right, let's, let's grab some of these because this is obviously my Avengers box. And we'll start out by grabbing some of the figures of the Jade Goliath Hulk himself. Oh, so cool. I love this one. This is a great ripped Hulk. You know, Squatties had minimal articulation, usually about three points, shoulder, waist, sometimes the head. But we got some just amazing different versions of all of these characters. So, I mean, here's just, just the Hulk himself. Oh, that's a good one. Look at that. He's got his head shaved. Look at, I mean, look at how different this like 70s style Hulk is with this almost 90s style Hulk with his head shaved. Um, here's a good one with classic purple pants. Great, big, huge body. I mean, you can see how fun these were for kids to play with. But they kept up with the comics at the time. So here's a couple of uh, different instances of Gladiator Hulk. And I actually think that they're slightly different colors. This one is more of an olive green compared to this one. So one probably came in like a four pack and the other kind of came maybe in one of the two packs. But as we're going to see throughout this line... They managed to kind of keep up with what was going on in comics at the time. What I can't keep up with is how many figures there are. So I'm going to look at them. We'll move them to the side as we go. Okay, here is the Mighty Thor. But like I mentioned, this is the Oliver Kuypel version of Thor. And it's awesome. He's got like a swinging Molnir, And he does have wrist articulation so that you can get his hammer swinging around. But look at how cool that, that swing effect is compared to King Thor. So here is a completely different version of Bearded Thor. Actually incredibly accurate to the comic design of the time compared to... Now, this is like one of those play school ones. So this one is not actually a squatty, but he ended up in the box. This is another more Oliver Kuypel version. Where is a classic Thor? Here we go. Here is your classic Jack Th Kirby Thor. So look how awesome it is that we got Jack Thur Kirby, classic Thor, six dots, blue, strappy boots, an old school looking Molnir, and then an Oliver Kuypel, more modern Thor with a completely different look. All of these in two-inch action figures in a kid's line. Oh, and we're not even done. Here is like an even more like almost first appearance type of Thor. But this is one of the beauties of when a line lasts for 
six years is maybe this is the first Thor we got. And then later on in the line, we got an even better classic Thor. So good. Speaking of original Avengers, we need to look at the main man himself, Captain America. Oh, that is such a great classic cap. You know, here's here's another one, but with his shield on his back and sort of more of a, a take charge type of pose. Here is something that looks much more like an ultimate Captain America in more of his Ultimates costume. And we saw that, you know, the Ultimates comic books were hot during this time. And so we're going to see Ultimates versions of a lot of these characters as we go. Here is more of the Marvel Now Captain America with that gray on on his uh, costume and like no feathers on the corner. And another cap. Uh, that actually may be pretty similar to the ones. But here's Captain America. Oh, this is a good one. Check this out. This cap probably came with a detachable shield. Just look at the action on that one. Look at that great pose. I love how dark that blue is. Oh, that is super cool. Hopefully there's a shield somewhere down in here. And uh, more. Here's another cap, similar to the one that we had. A lot of these came in multi-part packs, and so you would occasionally get extras of the same character. Now, we saw that play school cap. Here is another one, but ooh boy, he looks like he's been through the ringer. It would appear that this cap took some battle damage from one of my dogs at some point. I think we saw, oh no, this is actually a different one. Remember the first Thor we had? It had like a clear swooshing thing to his Molnir. This one is blue. Again, that more modern Thor. Oh, so great. You're going to hear me say cute and great about a million times in this. And of course, Bucky Cap. Because Bucky Cap, as a two-inch action figure for kids, comes with a gun. Because of course he does. And he's got his shield on his back, looks a little different, has the black on the costume. But again, this was consistent with what was going on with Captain America at the time. Uh, more Avengers, another of our founding Avengers. Here is Iron Man. Again, this is one of those preschool Iron Men. It's a little bit different than the uh, Squatties. we got a whole bag of Iron Man coming up. up. Ares, a one-time Avenger and general kind of bad guy. Sort of, or a... a Bad meaning bad, like a bad man kind of guy. Spider Woman, Jessica Drew. She looks like she needs a little bit of paint work there, but very cool. Here we have Ronan. Ronan was a part of Brian Michael Bendis' New Avengers uh, and actually was the character Echo, as well as Hawkeye? Or, anyway, pretty cool and made it into the line. Now, there is a super cute Black Widow with more of a stylized gun, but that's a gun. I mean, that's there's there's no other way you can say that. That's a two-inch kid's toy, clearly marketed to kids. I mean, look at how cute that face is with a gun. You know, we, got, we have McFarlane can't even, like, make figures with guns now. Bucky comes with two guns, two World War II era guns. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, man, that's amazing. Got his domino mask. Uh, more Avengers, the Black Panther. Very nice. I like that costume. I like the little black highlight, or the little gold highlights on it as well. And he has his cape. And his cape's a different color than the rest of his costume. Uh, this is Nick Fury. You can tell because he's such a happy Nick Fury. Again, weapon. Uh, and Nick Fury uh, is the comic version of Nick Fury. I figure we might run into a... a oh! I figured right. Here is the MCU version of Nick Fury. And he has like, I guess this is like a grenade of some kind. But this, uh, of course, is... Now, they did kind of retcon Nick Fury to look more like the uh, the movie version. And the movie version was based off of the ultimate version. So this may actually be the ultimate version of Nick Fury. We get a second Spider-Woman figure. This one is definitely different from the first. And it's really cool. She's got her web lines and her like Venom Strike attack. Oh, I forgot another cap. Oh, look at that. That, like, metallic blue looks really good. Here is Vision. Nice colors. That green and yellow really pop. And, of course, you can't have Vision without Scarlet Witch. And as you can see, most of these are unique sculpts for each one of them. 
Oh no! She Hulk lost her arms. She Hulk had a huge run in the Avengers when I was reading comics. Uh, when I was reading Avengers comics in the '80s, so I always associate her with the team. And of course, you can't have the Avengers without a classic Hawkeye. Lots of detail. Each one of the little arrows is sculpted. He's in a really cool pose that actually works. You know, you can kind of move him around. That's a great classic comic Hawkeye. I mean, and here's Tigra. You know, there were a number of figures in this line that we got as squaddies that it has taken us years, if not decades, to get as Marvel Legends. Pretty solid sentry. He doesn't have much articulation, but that's okay because he's a pretty one-note character. He may as well be a one-note action figure. But um bum uh, Shield agent with a gun. Ah, here we go. U.S. agent. So a little bit of a repaint of Captain America, but that's a different head sculpt. You can see that that is not a Steve Rogers head. That's definitely a John Walker U.S. agent head sculpt. This could be Wolverine's bike. I'm actually not sure. Uh, and then, okay, nope, these two have to stay. These, these two we'll talk about later. Captain Marvel. Again, a figure that it took us a long time before we got into Marvel Legends. And two of the coolest figures in the line. Stan Lee, who appeared in the cartoon. I guess he was like the, the doorman or he was like the, the introductory guy. But this is basically the Stan Lee figure. And Reptile, who I think actually did appear in the comics, but really became a central figure and like the, the younger character that the kids could relate to in the line. But how great is it that we got you know, whatever this guy's name was that, was that was voice acted by Stan Lee and Reptile? Really, really solid. Okay, next up we have what I would consider the Marvel Knights bag. And this has all of our super awesome down-to-earth characters like Shang-Chi. Really sweet, nice. He's got such great character and pop coming off of that. We've got several Daredevil figures. I think this was like the first Daredevil that we got. And here's a kind of newer, more improved Daredevil. But we also got Daredevil in his original yellow and brown suit. So very choice that we got multiple Daredevils. Now, <clears throat> you can't have Daredevil without Elektra. And here she is with her size... Oh, that's a that's really sweet, awesome Electra. Uh, living more in the uh oh, Punisher lost a hand, and it probably was holding another giant giant gun. But that's okay because trench coat Punisher, even though like they even have him like half smiling because squatty. But if you're worried about you know one armed trench coat Punisher not being enough, don't because here's your classic Punisher with his you know widow's peak haircut. And a straight up freaking bazooka. Can you believe it? They've got they've got the Punisher with an absolute bazooka. Love it. I didn't really have a huge amount of sort of cosmic characters, so Nova ended up in this. And you can see this this design for Nova was from the time of the Annihilation comic. So he has those shoulder pads, uh, and so it was very representative of what Nova looked like in the comic in the in the early aughts. Oh, here's another Punisher. Here's like Punisher, Marvel Now Punisher with like space guns and stuff. Now, we did get Iron Fist and look at that. He's got this awesome like Iron Fist effect going on and he is so happy to be punching the absolute crap out of you. He's got his little slippers. But to my knowledge, I don't think we ever got Power Man which is a major miss in this line. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong and I just didn't get Power Man or I didn't find him when I was putting all these together, let me know in the comments because I, I almost would go back on eBay and buy a Power Man to go with my squatty Iron Fist. Uh, oh, another Daredevil character, Bullseye, and he also has Electra size because that's how he kills her with those. We've got some of the darker characters in the Marvel Knights realm, We've got a couple of versions of Ghost Rider, both different. This one has kind of like the flaming chain and a little bit more menacing head sculpt compared to about as happy that you can make a flaming skull look. And two of the coolest. Moon Knight is a great squatty. He's got the crescent cape. He's got the awesome dark mask coming down. All of those great design elements. And of course... 
everybody's favorite vampire hunter, Blade, who has an Uzi and a sword with like an ammunition belt. And he's got his little fang sticking out. Ha! Uh, and his flat top. He's got his Wesley Snipes flat top. So Blade and Moon Knight are my two favorite of the Marvel Knights versions in my Squatty collection. Now, before we see the X-Men proper, let's take a look at some of the X-Villains, beginning with, of course, the main man himself, Magneto. This one is pretty sweet because he's on this little base, so he looks like he's floating, which is cool. He gets his arms up. He's got the rivets around his neck, which I think is such a key design element in his costume, so really super Magneto. I actually have three different versions of Juggernaut, and you can see they are all different. I want to say that's more of the ultimate version of Juggernaut. Here is like a classic, nothing can stop the Juggernaut, and here's like a battle-damaged Juggernaut, just simply proving that, in fact, nothing can stop the Juggernaut. It took us 20 years to get a classic Avalanche figure, but here he was with like an earth-moving effect in the Superhero Squad line, arguably even a better representation than the Marvel Legends one. Same thing for Pyro. Very, very classic Pyro has his backpack. And for, uh oh Pyro's got a broken arm. We may, have to, we may have to work on that. Actually, thank goodness that they went the extra length and made his you know, flamethrower things because otherwise I would have lost Pyro's arm. Very nice. Mystique. Even down to having the skull headdress and her little skull belt. Oh, if only we could get Dynasty in this line. Sabretooth. He's pretty pouty. That's, that's maybe one of the angrier squaddies that we're going to see. Uh-oh, Sabretooth's had a little bit of damage. Again, these were, these were kids' toys, and I let my kids play with them. Silver Samurai with a sweet, sweet sword. Again, it took us a long time before we got this in six inches. And what a gorgeous version of Dark Phoenix with the Flame Effect Phoenix as a base. And you can see it's that translucent plastic, but really, really strong Dark Phoenix figure. We saw the bad guys. Let's take a look at everybody's favorite, the Uncanny X-Men. And we'll just kind of go, go through this. Here is a really neat Iceman figure with, oh, well, even down to his hand is like part ice, part regular. Like, we see this a lot, that the lower body or the upper body is translucent. But look at how cool that effect is on his hand. Clearly, they really cared about doing this line properly. I mean, that is an awesome Iceman with the classic old school snowball that he's got going there and he's on his like ice slide base oh wait here's another one and oh check it out oh i didn't i didn't remember this so it's like an original x-men ice man because he's got like his pants and boots on so i don't think that we got all of the x-men in their kind of original x-men costumes but it's pretty great that we got ice man that way we could really use one of these in six inches she fell off, so let me grab Psylocke with her Psy Blade going on, just looking as cute as she can be, ready to absolutely pierce your mind with her purple hair. Of course, no toy line is complete without a bald man in a suit in a power chair, and that's exactly what we have here with Professor Xavier. You know, these things came in two packs, and so you could put Professor Xavier in a two pack with, say, this guy, whoever this guy is, and you figure that it would actually sell. This is actually the astonishing X-Men version of Wolverine, again, keeping up with the current look of the comics when these toys came out in the, in the early aughts. But, but by being in two packs, it would allow you to actually produce a figure like this and put it out to mass retail. We got a couple of Wolverines. You guys want to look at some Wolverines? So here is... Uh, Wolverine, this may actually be like from the movie, or at least inspired by the movie. Of course, he does have his claws. Here is a more classic yellow and blue Wolverine. Not quite the full-on classic that this one is. This is a much, much more typical tiger stripe Wolverine. And, you know, there's like a little smirk to that look. So he's still got his squatty smile, but with some Wolverine attitude, which is pretty great. Uh, oh, here's a slashing Wolverine that, unfortunately, he's still in the, the process of using his healing powers 
uh, from obviously a dog attack. Uh, but again, this is kind of that astonishing X-Men look, but look at how cool this is. He's like coming at you with the slashing effects from his claws. Unfortunately, they got chewed up a little bit. This one, oh my gosh, I did not remember this at all. That's a freaking bone claw Wolverine. So here's like Canada Joe in his flannel, like totally painted out flannel, like unshaven, huge mutton chop, bone claw Wolverine. And it's almost like the bones have joints. They're like actual fingers looking coming out. Oh, that's crazy. That is fantastic. Weapon X gets represented. Now, that's a really, really happy face for the torture and destruction that Weapon X went through. So, you know, can't, can't quite call that one comic accurate. That's definitely more squatty, squatty accurate. Let's look at some more X-Men. Actually, here's, uh, here's Fing Fang Foom's tail. I don't know where my Fing Fang Foom is, but I clearly have one because there's his tail. Here, well, you know, there's going to be Wolvies all day. Here's another Wolvie. Here's that same Wolvie that we saw, but he's got, like, the end of Die Hard tank top going on. You know how Bruce Willis started with, like, a white shirt, but then by the end of it, it was so dirty and sweaty and stuff that it was, like, gray. So that's, we'll call that Die Hard Wolverine. I am partial to brown suit Wolverine. That's what Wolvie was reading when I first started reading the comics. So for me, this is kind of always going to be my version of Wolvie. And check it out. Look, he's got the hairy arms. He's got little hairs on, on both sides of his arms. Oh, that's so good. Here is Samurai Wolverine from his adventures in Japan with a samurai sword and, and his uh, Japanese... It's not really a kimono. I'm not really sure what you would call that. All right. All right. One more. One more. One more. Slash, 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 slash. Got my fingers. I got, I've got I'm the best there is at what I do, and what I do is cross my arms. All right. Let's look at some different X-Men. So really good representation of Jim Lee's time on X-Men as well as the new X-Men. Here's Colossus. And Colossus is teamed up with a very Jim Lee version of Cyclops. Got his finger up there so that he can initiate his optic blast. We do get a sweet looking Nightcrawler, but better than that, the same sculpt in mid transformation, mid teleportation. So look at how awesome that purple teleportation look is, and it even goes through his tail. So just just a really nice touch with that. Storm is cool, and unlike so many Storm figures, this one is designed so well that her swooping cape comes down, and you can actually get her to stand. So even though she's like on point, this figure will stand up in your display. Cable has like a massive gun from the future. He's got his shiny eye happening. Uh, you know, guess what? You know, they, they're going to sell some Wolvies. This was like a play school Wolvie. Here's another one. This is the same Wolvie we've seen, but with no mask on. How badly do we need a new angel figure in the six inch line? I mean, ridiculously so. I like this. He's got like this windswept design underneath him, but we are in desperate need of a new angel figure. Gambit with his staff and his powered up playing card. Oh, that is very, very cool. I don't see a rogue. I think they made one. I just, I don't think I found it when I was putting everything together. Merc with a mouth gets two different versions. Kind of, here's the classic Rob Liefeld design for Deadpool. And here's more of the Ed McGinnis design. So both of those specific are, and you can see the differences in style. I mean, there's clearly differences in the art style of these two figures. Even though the sculpt is, is close, this is t uh, Rob Liefeld. This is Ed McGinnis. Again, we get that same Phoenix body, but with the light side of Jean Grey. Really cool Bishop figure. Uh, here is Cyclops from the Astonishing X-Men line. So uh, another version of Cyclops that was consistent with his look in the comics. And we're going to finish up with Astonishing X-Men Beast, as well as two more Beast figures. So here's like the regular Beast, and it's really cool. But I also have this one, and I think this is one of the rarer, more expensive figures in the line. This is the flocked beast, and you can see he's like furry. He's got that furry flocking pattern on him, and it's actually held up pretty well over the years. But I want to say that this is one of the more valuable figures, other than some of the ones that were released really late at the end of the line, is the flocked beast figure. 
It's time for Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four, and we got a great representation of the FF and all of their friends and foes. So let's start off with some figures of Ben Grimm, the Thing. So here are two ones that are the same sculpt, but very different paint jobs. Here's a more modern thing. Here, this thing actually has some different paint on his, uh, on his rocks. And then here's a much more classic version of the same one. So we got those. This is almost like, it's not quite a first appearance thing, but you can see he's a little bit more kind of rocky in that form. And then here is sort of a classic John Byrne era thing. Uh, a little bit of a goofy face going on there, but I still love it. I still love it. Let's take a look at the torch. Here is a really solid torch. And I bet we're going to use, yeah, we're going to use a lot of the same sculpt. But here he is with paint and here he is fully translucent. And then this was probably one of the earliest torch figures, more translucent. I definitely prefer these kind of flying versions more than that. Mr. Fantastic gets a figure, and he's actually wearing what looks more like the ultimate Fantastic Four costume in this one. Let's see if Susie is as well. Yeah, she is too. Now, she's got the great sort of semi-translucent effects, but that look is much more uh, Ultimate Comics Fantastic Four than it is your regular 616 universe. But thankfully, the FF have one of the best rogues galleries in all of comics, and that got represented as well. This guy is making a name for himself in the MCU uh, uh, Chapter 5, or, or the, uh, the fifth part of the MCU. So, glad to have Kang in the line. We've got a great Super Scroll who is ex uh, showing all four powers. Invisible Woman thing... Mr. Fantastic and Human Torch. Very nice. Uh, just a regular scroll hanging out. They probably, maybe they were in a two-pack together. I'm not sure. Silver Surfer came in a couple of different versions. Here was like the early one. And I love this pose. It's a really dynamic surfing pose. But we also got this one that has much more of a metallic sheen to him. It's not like vac metalized. It's not quite to that point. But he definitely is much more shiny, much more silvery, and because he has some articulation, you can do even more with him. So I think that's definitely my favorite of the Silver Surfer figures. Friends of the FF include Black Bolt, the king of the Inhumans, and sort of friend, sort of enemy Namor with his little web wings. The FF's very first opponent, Mole Man, makes it in the line. And God, that is just a classic looking Mole Man. I don't know, you could almost put that Mole Man in with your, with your Marvel Legends figures. Got another scroll. One more Human Torch. I like this one. This is like kind of the mid-transformation Human Torch. Really solid. And, of course, Analyst uh, from the Negative Zone. God, that's good. You know, we got that Build-A-Figure Analyst in Marvel Legends. But, man, I'd argue this is, you know, about as good a figure. And, of course, oh, 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 Ronan. Ronan floating around. I actually thought that was another Doctor Doom, but it's not. This is Doctor Doom. Now, sadly, it looks like Doom uh, suffered from a dog attack as well. His giant sword has been chewed up. But I think we'll see one more Doom before this, this box is all over with. Before we grab our next set of figures, let's open this back up and take a look at some of the deluxe bigger size figures that came out in the line. Here is a very happy, happy Galactus. Not quite as big as the one that we got in the HasLab, but certainly a big figure. Here is a really sweet Apocalypse. He plugs in and, you know, he's, you know, super happy to be, you know, one of the oldest mutants on Earth. Uh, we got... A couple of different versions of Happy Sentinels ready to kill any mutant that they come across. And it's kind of cool. Like, this is like the, the silver-chested original Sentinel. And then here's like a more modern Sentinel. That almost looks like something that came... I don't know what that came from, but that's kind of cool. And my favorite slash least favorite of the big figures, the Ultimate Comics Giant Man. So... You could have made so many different giant men figures, and yet somehow what you chose with this facial expression is a dude who was a misogynistic rapist who betrayed the Ultimates and got beaten to a pulp by Captain America. That's the figure. That's the version of Giant Man that we chose for the Superhero Squad line. So, 
just be respectful and of the fact that this is horrible, rapey, traitorous Henry Pym giant man. Now, the squaddies have to have somebody to fight, right? You can't have all these good guys and not have some bad guys. And they really touched on some really interesting corners of the Marvel Universe with the villains in the superhero squad line. Now, of course, you do have a, an Infinity Gauntlet-wielding Thanos. You can see he's very happy. He's about ready to you know, use his four little fingers to snap away half of the universe. We got a Destroyer figure who is obviously very slippery, but... Clearly powerful with this massive effect that he has going on. Here is Abomination with his sort of fishy looking appearance ready to battle your Hulk. But then we get ones like this. We got Dreadnought. Like Dreadnight. Like how on earth out of all of the heroes in the Marvel Universe or the villains in the Marvel Universe, they come up with Dreadnight. That is just fantastic. Of course, we got an Ultron generations before we finally got a classic Ultron in the six inch line and a very, very Jack Kirby version of Loki with his, his extremely Jack Kirby costume going there. Yeah, that's Crimson Dynamo. We got a Crimson Dynamo figure in this as well as like, aren't they both Crimson, Crimson Dynamo? I think they are. I think they're both like different versions of it, but this one's, Awesome. Look at those eyes. Look at the paint application on those eyes. That is super cool. Still need a new Mandarin. If they could give us a Mandarin that was anywhere as good as this one. Now, of course, he doesn't have ten rings because unless they doubled up on a finger. I think he only has eight because he's only got eight fingers. Nope. They gave him ten rings. There's two rings on that finger and two rings on that finger. I love Hasbro when they're doing it right. They know that the Mandarin has 10 rings, but this figure only has eight fingers. And so they managed to double up on his middle finger so that he has 10 rings. Oh, that's fantastic. That, that is fantastic. What kid's toy line would be complete without a Nazi with a cosmic cube? So we got a couple of different versions of the Red Skull. One with Mickey Mouse gloves, one without... Taskmaster is just so freaking toyetic with his shield, his sword, his cape, and of course, his skull countenance. Glad that he made it into the line. Very nice Absorbin' Man kicking it right here. And then, I mean, Absorbin' Man's cool enough, but these last three, four are just epic. We did get Doom, so here's a more classic version of Doom, but that's not the Doom that I want to talk about. Modok. A happy little Modoc made his way into the Squatties line, even with his control thing in his hand. So awesome with that huge face. That's Zizax. It's like all X's. It's like X's and Z's. Zizax. A rare, weird Hulk villain. But then look at this. The perturbed morning coffee Doctor Doom. He's got his like alligator monster slippers. He's got his rolled up newspaper, his doom coat, his I hate Iron Man tea mug. He's got his sleeping goggles. But this is the perturbed doom from the cartoon. Absolutely brilliant. You can create a definitive Iron Man armory just from the superhero squad alone. And let me show you. Because we start with... Some of our very first Iron Man figures. I think this was like more of a movie designed Mark I. Yeah, here is a much more comic designed. Or is that like Iron Monger? Maybe this is supposed to be Iron Monger, whereas this is our Mark I Iron Man in his golden or his beautiful silver suit. Oh, nope, look at that. So this is more of the movie version. Here is Jack Kirby's. Mark I Iron Man in all of its simplistic glory. Oh, so good. Then, of course, we're going to move into more modern Iron Man armor. This is like the classic 70s look of Iron Man. Uh, here is a Thor Buster armor. He's got like the Destroyer logo up on his head, and he's got the, the kind of like it mimics the wraps along Thor's legs. So that's a Thor Buster. While we're busting... Hulk Buster, 
And actually, a couple of Hulk. Actually, this may not be Hulkbuster. This may be just some other version of Iron Man. This is a definitive Hulkbuster Iron Man suit. So we have seen a lot of these both in Marvel Select and Diamond Select, but this one holds its own for busting Hulks for sure. We got Stealth Armor Iron Man in his blue stealth suit. Very nice. Oh, one of my favorites. I loved modular, the uh, the kind of the. It's kind of like modern armor. It was like before the modular, but it had the, the, the cutouts on the gloves and boots. This was an era of Iron Man I really loved. It's not fully accurate because he had a silver, or he had a circular unibeam on that. This one probably is, yeah, it's just a repaint of Silver Centurion Iron Man. So here's the classic Silver Centurion version. So we'll probably find another one in here. That This is the one. This is the one that I love. See, okay, he does have the cutouts, but here they're actually sculpted in. Those were just painted on on the other one. Here they're sculpted in. This is that modern armor version of Iron Man. I, I really, this run on the comics had some of the better Iron Man stories. I really, and they actually collected it in one of those epic collections recently. So if you get a chance, go back and read it. It's a great era. We've got Iron Man 2099 or whatever, the future Arno Stark Iron Man. I mean, it took years for us to get this bad boy as a Walgreens exclusive, but here he is in the squatty line with all of his, like, bolts and steampunk parts. Fabulous. Uh, okay, there's a movie. Here's a movie, Iron Man, like from Iron Man 1. Here is Ultimate's Iron Man, where he's got that almost manga-styled costume from Brian Hitch's artwork in the Ultimate comics. Very, very cool. That's a good one. That's just kind of a good modern Iron Man figure flying. He's got this boot jets blasting. Great colors. More of the metallic going on there. Can't leave Rhodey out because we've got several war machines. So these two appear to be the same. They've just got a little bit of different paint applications. But then here is the best war machine that we saw. And doesn't really articulate, but very, very... Hey, who you talking to? I'm War Machine. Great figure. This, uh, that's like the last one. We'll save that. Here, this is awesome. Here's Iron Man with a Tony Stark head. That's so cool. Oh, I love that. Another flying Iron Man with more of the metallic look. Here is Tony in a metallic look, but he's actually holding his Iron Man uh, mask. So very, very cool. And then a couple of the ones from... This is the Play School version, so that one doesn't really count. And then a couple of versions from kind of the end of the line. Here, here is a pretty straightforward Iron Man. And then I think this is like probably the one that was most inspired by the Superhero Squad TV show because he's got the visible eyes and he just kind of looks like the leader of the squaddies. You got to remember from... You know, around that 2005 to 2011, and I think the cartoon was 2009 to 2011, that was when Iron Man was clearly the face of the MCU, and so he was really branded across all of the Marvel products, and that is a great way of doing it. Guys, this video has gone so long that I don't think I can do justice to all of the Spider-Man figures that came out in the Superhero Squad line. So I am going to do a separate video looking at Spider-Man Squaddies. And in that video, we're going to announce the winner of the Mafex Black Spider-Man. So be ready for that one coming very soon. And as you can see, we're going to have lots and lots of Spidey Squaddies, as well as probably some special surprises to talk about in that video. In the meantime... Go ahead and give me a comment, hit like, and of course, subscribe to Carbon Scoring for the very best in comics history and action figures.